Hi. The sun is not just something that we see every day and uh, drives our cycle of life from day to night. It's also the center of the solar system, all the planets orbit around it, and also it is the star that is the nearest to us and the most easily studied star in the sky. So because it is nearby and it is a star that is fairly typical of many stars at least, we uh, can examine it closely and think about other stars in terms of them being pretty much like the sun and then we can look at the differences among stars also in that respect. But also keep in mind that the sun is the source of energy for the solar system. It provides the heat that makes Mercury and Venus hot and Earth warm enough to have life um, and the outer planets are colder. So if we think about the sun and we want to just look at a lot of terminology about the structure of the sun in this and the first thing is the sunspots. And so when Galileo uh, observed the sun, the first thing he noticed was that there were these spots and by observing them with, uh, this is a replica of his telescope, by observing them he was able to see that the rotation of the sun could be determined. He determined over a number of days, about 25 to 30 days, the spots drift across the sun and return around the other side because of the rotation of the sun. And those spots and other features on the sun have been observed pretty much ever since. Now to give you an idea of scale, the sun is much, much bigger than any of these planets. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune here. Of course, Earth and uh, the other small planets that are in, in the inner solar system would be even much smaller on this scale. Now, the sun has a cycle that goes through, uh, we call it a magnetic cycle, and it's 22 years long, except that it has broken into two parts that are 11 years each. So the uh, uh, sun begins at, say, solar minimum, and then becomes solar maximum, and returns back to solar minimum every 11 years. And that's the observed cycle of sunspots. But this is because in that period of time, the, the magnetic pole that may be north and south here will flip and reverse and come back. And after 11 years, then the magnetic north pole is down and the magnetic south pole is up. When there's lots of spots, the magnetic field is very complicated and uh, uh, then it begins the cycle again and finally takes uh, 22 years to return to the, the magnetic north pole as the same place as the magnetic south pole. And so we can see these features. There's, this is what we call solar activity. What we see here is the photosphere. This is what Galileo could see. This is what we can see with using uh, a telescope and a projection or a filter. And this is the layer, the visible layer of the sun that we see. It's called the photosphere. Now at other wavelengths, we can see much more um, uh, violent activity sometimes. This is a flare, and this is uh, in uh, ultraviolet or X-ray high energy emission that we have here. We can see a prominence here and uh, coming off of the sun and, a, and a fla uh, do the flare, and there's a flare right in here. Now the one thing that we always can see with the sun 
in particular is that regions that are bright are also very hot, regions that are dark are cooler. And so as with the sunspots, the cooler regions are the dark regions here and uh, they are about a thousand degrees, maybe four thousand degrees Kelvin and the um, uh, sun where the rest of the sun on average is about 5,800 degrees. So the darker spots mean cooler spots. So if we have a look here in uh, ultraviolet, the scaling here is, um, is non-intentional here, but this is the x-rays. We see a violent, violent flare event here in x-rays, and x-rays are the hottest, show indicating the hottest region. So these are millions of degree explosions, and we can see that that's happening. And this would be during an active period. When the sun had a lot of spots on the photosphere, it also would have a lot of x-ray activity. This is the same as true for ultraviolet. Now both of these are, um, these are taken by different uh, telescopes that are in space that can uh, measure light in those way at those wavelengths but the light here the colors here are artificial so they use colors that we can see because obviously we can't see ultraviolet we can't see x-rays so artificial uh, interpretation of that light has to be made so this is done here where the intensity is, is bright yellow, meaning brighter, more x-rays, not so many x-rays where it's darker. Here is ultraviolet, a combination of ultraviolet um, and x-ray light from several telescopes in that picture on the left. Now, the uh, photosphere, in the terms of the outer layers of the sun, we have the photosphere, the chromosphere is the Next highest layer, the photosphere, is the layer we see. The chromosphere is the layer of red, and that is this area here. And the, these are the um, regions that they're uh, hot areas that are sticking up, and we can see that in the x-rays. Now, this is a visible light picture. So the only time we can see the chromosphere in visible light is during an eclipse, and that's what we see here. But once the eclipse is fully covering everything, we can see the corona. So the corona is the bright outer layer, and the reason it's bright, it's very thin, not much material there, but it's very, very hot. A uh, million degrees or more, maybe two million uh, or more degrees. And so we have the photosphere, that's cooler, that's where we have the sunspots. That's where we have the flaring activity. Then we, above that, we have the chromosphere. And then above that, we have the corona or the crown, the corona of the sun. And so that's what we can see in terms of the, uh, of the sun, but the down deep inside, we can't see, but we have a good understanding of what is down there down in the very core, this is where the nuclear reactions are taking place. So uh, then the light then transfers and radiatively, which means the light has to work its way gradually through the star from the center outward, taking upwards of maybe 10 million years to get just across here. Now, when it gets to the convective zone, it, the time is much less to get above because of convection. And the convection is where you have the hot bubbles of gas down at the bottom are able to rise up. And the cool ones at the top, which are, have been cooled down because they're in contact with the surface, they cool down. And so you get a convective similar to the convection that goes on in a boiling pot of water, where the uh, pot of water is rolling in a boil. This is happening in this entire region. 
So there are six layers of the sun. We have the three interior layers, the core, the radiative zone, the convective zone, and then the three atmospheric or outer layers, the photosphere, the chromosphere, and the corona. And we have some other things that in this picture, the prominences are these loops that are caused by the ejection of material. Uh, we have flares, which are these explosions happening in the photosphere. We have uh, on the surface, if you look in fine detail, these, each one of these is about the size of a state or even larger uh, in the United States, like, uh, uh, like Texas or larger. And here is the regions around the spot. And these little bumps are these granules and the granules are the top of the boiling layer of convection. So we have the convection happening here and we can see it only from the very top and we see this bubbling going on and, and, and we all over the sun. And here we have the sunspot. We can see the spot itself has the umbra in the center, a, a less dark region called the penumbra. And uh, the sunspots are due to the magnetic activity going on in the sun. So a lot of the things are related to the magnetic activity the flares, the sunspots, and um, the coronal mass ejections when material flies away from the sun. These are all related to magnetic activity going on in the sun. When the sun is quiet and doesn't have the magnetic activity, you still see things like the granulation and the wind. The solar wind is the gradual flow of material out into space and we can see that with comets, they have a tail, and that tail always points away from the sun. And that is because of the constant wind that is flowing away from the sun. So that is the sun.